Have you ever thought what would happen if you got canceled? Maybe you wondered which of your family and friends would stick with you. Uh, well, there's certainly plenty of examples of people who've been canceled recently. But how about one that was well known by Jesus and his followers? Well known enough that we can hear her story in this video. Well, if this is one of the first One Church Teal videos that you've checked out, we've actually got a free gift for you and you can find it in the Next Step links just outside of this video window. Now, before we hear the teaching today, how about a really popular song from a few years back that is a decent attempt to express some sympathy to someone who's currently experiencing being on the outside. When you get what you want, but not what you need When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep Stuck in rivers When the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? Lights will guide you home And ignite your bones Oh, to, to fix someone, that takes, that takes dedication, patience. It takes skill, it takes sacrifice. It takes a lot of love, doesn't it? To restore someone, to, to fix someone. You know what's a lot less hassle? <laughs> Cancel them. Cancel culture has uh, seen such a huge resurgence in recent years. It, almost instant conclusions are made based on little but loud bits and pieces of information put out there quickly by social media. Sometimes all it takes is one tweet and you're out. One definition of cancel culture is, says it, it's the popular practice of withdrawing support from a person or company that has said or done something another person or group considers offensive. So a person is ostracized. A company is boycotted. Before their lawyer can get out, we take this matter very seriously statement. It's too late. The damage is done. Uh, you're canceled. 
But long before social media facilitated, you know, this super fast cancel culture, it, it, it was happening. Uh, way back in the gospel times, the, the books that are in the, written about to when Jesus was involved in public ministry on planet Earth, there, there are stories of people that Jesus encountered uh, that a lot of people in the culture of that time canceled. Tax collectors like Zacchaeus were canceled because of their political alignment with the uh, unpopular, even hated Roman government of the time. The John 4 woman at the well was ostracized by the women of her community because of her past. Jews canceled Samaritans, even the good ones. Pharisees canceled everyone that didn't share their religious views. The disciples, we'll see it later, they canceled a blind man because they thought his blindness was karma. Then there's Mary from Magdala, Mary Magdalene. She's the canceled person from the Gospels that is going to help us answer this question. Can you come back from being canceled? She's the one that's going to help us sort out the difference between, uh, you know, cancellation that sort of gets it right and cancellation that gets it wrong. Now, when Pastor Jonathan and uh, one of our staff, Jeff, were in Israel, uh, we visited Mary's hometown on the western shore of Galilee. It, it, it has been recently excavated. It's quite exciting, actually. They found a synagogue that would have been there in the time of Jesus when he visited it. They found a coin from the, you know, the Roman governor that was in power at that time. And so, I mean, I've walked the road from where Jesus' hometown is in Nazareth all the way down to the Sea of Galilee, the north end, uh, Capernaum, where Jesus had his ministry headquarters. And, and that road takes you right by Magdala. Now, they wouldn't let us in to take pictures with the video camera. And so we, uh, we used the drone camera. I'm actually near the recently discovered village of Magdala, where Mary Magdalene came from, a woman who was cured of seven demons by Jesus. As Jesus did his ministry in Galilee, there are a lot of people who supported him. In fact, it says in Luke chapter eight, verses one to three, it says, soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took with him 12 of his disciples, along with some of the women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, among them, Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Oh, did you hear that? Mary Magdalene, Mary of Magdala. We don't know a lot about her life before she turned to Jesus to fix her. We do know that she was well off financially because she was one of Jesus' major supporters along with some of the other women that were listed there. We also know that Jesus had a lot of reasons to cancel her instead of fix her. Mary Magdalene was complicated, demonized, ostracized, stigmatized, and cancelized. Is that, is that a word? You know, the James Webb Telescope has confirmed again that we live in one big universe. Have you seen the pictures? When Mary stepped out of the door of where she lived in her home in Magdala, Israel, on the western shores of Galilee, she, was, she, was, she felt she was up against one big universe. But all of that changes for Mary Magdalene when she turns her demonically tortured life to Jesus. And he says, he says Mary, <laughs> you're turning away from your old life. You're turning to me. You're trusting me. I will fix you. And he frees her and he, he heals her from her brokenness. Can you come back after being canceled? Before we let Mary answer that question, let's look at what cancel culture gets right. And then let's look at what cancel culture gets wrong. All right. What cancel culture can get right is this. It can hold people accountable to truth. 
It, it did that for Mary of Magdala. The, I love that about the Bible. It never hides any information that is helpful for us to know to see what Jesus can do in the life of someone who trusts him. It, it doesn't sugarcoat it or cover it over. It, it says what really happened. Um, for Mary of Magdala, she had her seven demons. She was messed up in her past. Accountability to truth is what cancel culture can get right. And today's social media can make that accountability happen very, very quickly. Whether an individual or group is called out for their mistreatment of women or, or, or black people or indigenous people or, or some injustice, some unjust treatment of people in society, or whether it's a, co a company being held accountable for their negative treatment of workers somewheres in the world or, or their treatment of the environment. Cancel culture can hold people accountable to truth about injustices and even then rally people uh, to social change for the better. But listen, 71% of the people, as I researched, surveyed, said they believe cancel culture goes too far. Why? Because they say it unfairly punishes and shames people for past actions or statements. The article went on to say they can ruin someone's reputation because they don't share someone else's views or opinions. In extreme cases, you know, someone will say, because I disagree with you on this one issue, I will do what I can to destroy you, make you irrelevant. So, <laughs> we also need to look at not only what uh, cancel culture can get right, but what cancel culture can get wrong. He, 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 cancel cul culture can get this wrong. It can unjustly cancel a person due to partial or false information. It happened in Jesus' time. He and his disciples were traveling down the road. They came across a man who was blind. Well, let, let's, let's let scripture tell the story. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? You got two options, Jesus. He says, none of the above. It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus answered, this happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. All humans have brokenness in so many different areas, not just our physical bodies. And, and we need the power of God to, to, to restore us, Jesus saying. But, but Peter, Peter and the disciples, John, James, they had canceled the man based on false information. Jesus says, none of the above. None of the information that you have is right. That's faulty theology, Jesus is saying. Now, Mary of Magdala is exhibit A for this. She's got to be, as one person said, the most misrepresented person of the New Testament. We're not talking about partial wrong information about her. We're talking about a lot of false information. Let's jump to one leader in church history, just over 500 years after Jesus had freed Mary of Magdala from all those demons, the church leader, Pope Gregory I, defied the evidence to the contrary and claimed in a sermon in the 500s that Mary Magdalene was the same person as the unnamed immoral woman in the Gospels that Jesus forgave. Even though all four Gospels are clear, they're two totally separate People, but centuries went on. You know, people were a lot of them were illiterate, and books like the Bible were not available in widespread print, and and that false information went on about her for centuries. It took until listen to this, 1969. That's not all that long ago, you know, <laughs> for Pope John VI to fix and correct that falsehood by showing that. Mary Magdalene and that unnamed immoral woman in the Bible are two different people. However, it hasn't stopped people from trying to make money off of the falsehoods about Mary Magdalene. The best known would be Dan Brown's, you know, Da Vinci Code. Reminding me about uh, another woman who was a victim of false information. Uh, uh, another woman, I don't, don't know what her agenda, her reasons, her motivation, but she spread false information about another woman that she wanted to sort of get. And that wrong 
That false information spread fast and furious in her community, and this uh, woman was ostracized. She was joked about. She was canceled. Years later, the woman who had initiated the false information and the gossip went to apologize, and the canceled victim thought about it and he said, I forgive you. But then she said, but I want you to come with me. And she took a, a feather pillow, a pillow filled with feathers that she had out on her balcony on a windy day and she tore it apart. She took a knife, ripped it apart and the feathers of course went all over the place in the wind. She said, now I will forgive you, but can you please go and pick up every one of those feathers? And the woman looked at her, I, I can't do that. She says, well, what, I will forgive you, but what are you going to do about all the falsehood that you have spread just like these feathers? You know, false words can do so much damage. You know, remember how the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, the power of words. Jesus himself said this. He said, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. You know, and often these little sound bites in Twitterdom and other social media. You know, there's no context, there's no background about when it happened and where the person was at in their headspace at the time. It's just, you know, half-truths come out. You know, how many have found the problem with half-truths is that too often people get a hold of the wrong half? Isn't that the truth? Proverbs 18, 17 says, the first to speak in court sounds right until... The cross-examination begins. You know, if I had a wish here, if I had a wish for people in the world today, I'd have many of them, but one of them would be this, that listening and hearing would become this super cool, popular to-do skill that everybody just got a whole lot better at, to, to listening to people that they didn't even agree with, that came from a, a, a different a different. Uh, place, not just geographically, but politically and, and, and faith-wise, that they would just listen and hear the words, rather than just getting their information from their own echo chambers in social media. Uh, they'd listen to other views, other perspectives. They would check sources. And then, watch this now, even if they disagreed with them, they'd say something like this, you know, maybe I disagree with you, but you are a lot more important than any view or opinion or issue that you and I might agree or disagree on. You are more important to me than any belief or opinion that you have. Uh, uh, well, what else can cancel culture get wrong? All right. Well, first of all, we've seen it can unjustly cancel a person due to going with partial or or false information. But secondly, it's, it's incapable of supporting authentic change. It's incapable of supporting authentic change. What does cancel culture do with the person who sees their wrong and owns their stuff, renounces it, it was wrong, it repents from it, turns away from it, and goes in a whole new, healthier direction in their life. You know, I was thinking if, if, if cancel culture had a song, it would not be, I will try to fix you. It would be, I will try to dismiss you. Listen, if Jesus had a practice cancel culture on the people he met, you know what? The blind man would still be left blind. The woman at the well will be left without living water for her soul. Zacchaeus would be still left up a tree out on a limb. Peter's story would have ended with his denial of Jesus and Mary of Magdala would be still stuck <laughs> with her seven demons. Cancel culture does not make enough space for a person to change. Sorry, that tattoo is permanent. My grandson, uh, one, of the, one of them said to me, Poppy, I have a secret power. I can be invisible. And he just acted like I couldn't even see him. I said, I can see you. And I described what he was wearing. He says, Poppy, it's just pretend. <laughs> it's just pretend. As if, you know, don't you know? Uh, cancel culture doesn't factor in two secret powers. And thank God they're not pretend. <laughs> God has these two secret powers, redemption and restoration. 
<laughs> Through repentance, he invites us to experience redemption and restoration. The power to change our futures entirely. Can, can a person come back after being canceled? Well, that all depends on, on whether you turn to CC or JC. CC, cancel culture. JC, Jesus Christ. Trust what you, trust what Jesus says about your past. When you turn to Jesus, what does he say about your past? The entire Bible is about God providing people with the power to change. <laughs> turn to me. You weren't made to live life without me, so turn to me and do life with me. And I'll be with you. I'll empower you. I'll strengthen you. I'll get you through whatever you go through. And when this life is over, you'll be with me forever. God just is constantly. Just think of some of our Bible heroes. Just think of the, the destiny that they would have had if, if cancel culture ruled instead of JC ruling. All right? Abraham lied. And he did. Therefore, Abraham is forever branded as a liar. David Abuse of power, King David in the Bible. King David, abuse of power and adultery. Okay, so he's yesterday's king. Rahab, she's going to wear that prostitute brand for life. That was her past. And that's her future. Joseph, he was falsely accused of attempted rape. His reputation wrecked for life. The woman at the well, all she's ever going to be known for is a serial marriage breaker. Peter, the Jesus denier, no one's ever want to go to his church, let alone build the church on anyone like that. Paul, the persecutor of Christians in his past, he's never to be trusted again. And Mary of Magdala, that demonized woman from that town in Western Galilee, she's done and dusted. What am I saying? You know the Bible heroes. Abraham, David, Rahab, Joseph, woman at the well, Peter, Paul, Mary of Magdala. We, we, we know what Jesus did for them about their past, how he changed their future. What am I saying? I'm saying God builds his kingdom through the very people that others cancel because God is all about providing people the power to change. Can, cancel culture? CC? says, do wrong, and you're canceled. JC says, repent of your wrong, and your wrong is what will get canceled. CC says, you are defined by the wrongs you have done. JC, you are defined by what I have done for you. CC, you're frozen to your past. JC, you're free from your past. Because in CC's world, once canceled, always canceled. But in Jesus Christ's kingdom, you and I get another chance. God's power, when we repent, his powers of redemption and restoration, they're not pretend, they're not secret, they are real. And they, and they work for you and me when we repent and we turn to the Lord. But you know, I, I just wish I could be there in that moment when Jesus uh, prayed over Mary she obviously was so entangled with a bunch of junk and stuff from her past, wrong things, and Jesus freed her. But you know, you know, what, I, you know what I really appreciate about Mary of Magdala? It's what she did after that moment. <laughs> she didn't just get free, she stayed free. She didn't just go to Jesus for freedom from those demons. She followed Jesus and grew in her spiritual life because he was her teacher. He was her Lord. Matter of fact, all four Gospels explain this. She, how she moved forward into what Jesus had for her future. And, and that's, what we, that's what we do. We can trust what Jesus says about our past, but then we move forward into what Jesus has for our future. That, that, that's exactly what Mary Magdalene did. Do you know that she was at the crucifixion? A lot of women were along with men. But, but here's how scripture says that many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene. So, so she doesn't forsake him in his worst moments. 
other disciples fled. She, 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 didn't. she was at the cross, probably overwhelmed, feeling helpless and hopeless. But then she also just felt such an allegiance. She actually accompanied to the burial site. Look at this. Both Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. That's as, if you read the context, that's when Jesus' body was placed in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And they're sitting there watching. And you've got to know what's going on in their minds. These, these men, they're putting Jesus in the tomb, but he hasn't even had a proper burial because in a Jewish burial, you would take um, burial ingredients and prepare the body properly for being uh, buried. And, but it's Friday. And they're, you know, the next day's the Sabbath. At sundown on Friday, the Sabbath begins. And so the shops are just about to close that would sell bur burial ingredients. If they're going to get them, they have to get there fast. And then as they're sitting across the tomb, you know, they, they know that the, the only time they can go and try to give Jesus a decent burial is when the Sabbath is over. So first thing, Sunday morning. So let's pick up the story there. Early on the first day of the week, that Sunday, while it was still dark, <laughs> they couldn't even wait till the sun came up, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. So she sees Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. I mean, he's dead, right? His body's been taken away. That's what's in her head. Jesus said to her, Mary. <laughs> he said to her, Mary. You know, she, she'd heard that voice before, right? In Magdala, Mary. And, and, and when she, she hears that voice, something clicks because she knows that she knows that voice and she there's just something that just happens deep inside the deepest part of her being as she responds and, and scripture says she says in Aramaic Rabboni which means teacher Jesus said do not hold on to me go instead to my brothers and tell them Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord you know Mary was the last at the cross. <laughs> but that's about, that's about the last time she came in last in the gospel. She's, she's first at the tomb. She's the first person to see Jesus risen from the dead. And she's the first person to have the privilege of telling other people the good news that Jesus is risen from the dead. Uh, I would have loved to have been at that Jerusalem shop that had sold the burial ingredients earlier that week. You know, the, the, when, when, when Mary comes in, maybe she's returning, I'm, you know, this isn't in the Bible, but yeah, I can just picture her returning the burial spices because they haven't been used, obviously. And just bouncing into the shop where she had purchased them before closing time on Friday evening, saying, you know, just with this big unsuppressible smile on her face saying, I'd like to return some burial spices, please. And then the woman behind the counter saying, for sure. And then, uh, wait, aren't you the woman that was in here just before we closed last Friday for the Sabbath? And you look like, oh my, you, you were grieving and you were weeping. You were a wreck woman. You look like you'd been canceled. Oh yes, Mary would say, that was me. What happened? Well, the burial ingredients were to give Jesus a proper burial. But he won't be needing them anymore because Jesus is alive now. And because Jesus is alive, lady, you can have eternal life also. Oh, what, what, a, what a change. She, her, her whole future now is wrapped up in helping other people come to know that Jesus doesn't cancel people. He dies on the cross so that they can have a future with him forever. Listen, I don't know what words of cancellation have been spoken over your life 
or even that go on in your head. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what wrongs you've done that may make you insist on feeling that you have a ruined future. There's just not a whole lot of hope there for your future. Listen, the truth is, every person listening to me right now has a reason to be canceled. The Apostle Paul wrote in a book called Romans to the Christians in Romans, he says, every one of us have fallen short of the glory, the perfection of God. Every one of us are messed up. All have sinned, every one of us. And he says, the result of that sin is death. And then he goes along on to say, but that's exactly why Jesus died for sinners, for sinners. Jesus died on the cross to cancel what would otherwise cancel us. And if we confess our sins, he, the Bible says, he, one of his followers, John, he wrote, he said, he'll cleanse us from all sin, all unrighteousness, every wrong that we have done. So, so when people speak words of cancellation over your life, trust what Jesus says. On the cross, his actions say it best, don't they? This is what it cost. I'm being crucified giving my life. This is what it costs to fix you. And I love you so much. I'm giving my life to fix you so that you won't be canceled like you deserve to be, but so that you can have eternal life with me and the life that God wants for you forever. This is what I'm willing to sacrifice to fix you. You know, when people speak words of cancellation over our lives. <laughs> if we're a follower of Jesus, we can cancel their cancellations, can't we? And move forward in what Jesus has for our future. And then what? And then what? Well, then we do what Mary did. We, we tell other people what Jesus did for us and that he will do the same for them. That's what church is. It's a community of people who love one another the way that Jesus loves us, who accept one another the way that Jesus accepts us, who forgives one another the way that Jesus forgives us. We do for others what Jesus has done for us. Our message is not, you messed up, we cancel you. <laughs> Our message is, Jesus can fix you. Join us because every one of us are being fixed by him. Every one of us are being restored by Jesus Christ. And nothing, when you follow Jesus, nothing could cancel you from your future in heaven with him. And that, that, that's exactly what we're gonna pray about right now and help people do right now. First of all, how many are with me? And you say, Pastor Keith, I'm ready to, to turn away from just living for myself or what other people say. I'm, I'm willing to trust Jesus with my future. I need his forgiveness as much as anyone. I've done wrongs in my life and I'm gonna take accountability for my life. <laughs> and say, Jesus, I'm going to trust you with my future. Can you just pray with me right now? I'm going to pray with others in just a moment. But, but if you are saying, I'm turning to Jesus, I'm trusting him, I need his forgiveness. If you're saying that, just, just pray these words after me. If these words are true for you, just pray them right where you are right now. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for never giving up on me. I open my heart to you right now and ask you to come in to cleanse me of all the wrongs I have done, cleanse me of all my sins. I trust you with my future, Jesus. Keep cleansing me as I live for you all the days of my future, right into heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus. I'm following you as of now. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Matt will tell you some next steps to take. But let, let me just pray. How many people, you're a follower of Jesus, but maybe you've been canceling yourself. <laughs> maybe you've been canceled by others. I, I, I want to invite you, Ray, and stop listening to the voices that cancel you and start listening to the voice that, of Jesus who died so that you would never have to be canceled, so that you could have a future no matter what you have faced from your past or what you're going through right now. Trust the voice that says, I will fix you. I alone have the power to change your life, to redeem you and to restore you. Let, let, let's, let's, let me just pray for you right now. Jesus, where would I be today if I was stuck with my worst moments and the wrongs I had done 
and everyone praying with me can say that. But Lord, thank you for going to the cross. Thank you that now I know my wrongs have been paid for. <laughs> They've been canceled forever. And I'm going to trust what you say about me. I'm going to listen and hear from the Bible what you, the future that you say you have for me, the purpose that you have for my life. And Lord, help every one of us move forward from this day forward, move forward into the future that you have for every one of us. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for doing for us what you did for people like Mary and others in Bible times. Thank you, you're still doing it today. And for every person that's asking you to do it right now, you're doing it for them. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Jesus was not about canceling people, but he was about canceling, or put another way, forgiving our mistakes. Having regrets did not count you out for Jesus. And that's just one of the reasons we find Jesus to be the best example of how to live your best life. And it's also why we see videos like this as just one part of an ongoing conversation about him. So we would invite you to keep journeying with us. And along that journey, it's our sincere hope that you'll hear more about Jesus, his way of doing life, which we try to live out in our mission to know God, love people, and impact our city. If you wanna know more about One Church Co, our team has put together some next step links right on this page to help you connect with us. Feel free to share this video if you found it helpful. And for more teaching videos and other content from One Church Co, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.